Thanks so much for joining us again today. I'm Paulette Lynch, Executive Director of the Arts Council for Monterey County. And we really believe, as you know, that the arts are the answer. And every month we're bringing you artists, arts leaders, arts organizers, uh, lots of different people throughout the county to show different aspects of all of that. And today I'm really thrilled to have with us people from the Monterey County Arts Habitat and um, their Art Open Studios tour. So we're going to talk about that, um, the artistic process a little bit, and also uh, how to how can artists and uh, people throughout Monterey County connect in a way that we're all benefiting. And it's just one of the, the great aspects of being in Monterey County, that we have so many people who are living here, who are working here, and doing everything that they can to make our place a more vibrant place to live. So first, I want to welcome Marty Manson. Hi, Paulette. Thank you so much for joining us today. And Marty is the board chair of the Arts Habitat. And uh, we also have with us Mary Hill. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Paulette. It's so wonderful. Mary is one of the featured artists on the Open Studio Tour. So we're going to talk about uh, Arts Habitat in more depth. Uh, in our second segment today, but right now we're going to talk about the absolutely amazing and it's the 27th annual Monterey County Artists Open Studio Tour and, and also the, with their plans for, for the tour uh, yet to come. So um, thanks again for being with us. Marty, how about if we start with you? Um, can you tell us a little bit about um, what happens in this in the open studio tour. Why do you even call it open studio? Open studios, is, it's so much, I find it incredibly fun to do this. Um, there are 85 artists and arts organizations that are participating this year. Um, every year it's a little different number, you never quite know who's going to be on the tour, sure. um, but it's open to the public, it's free. These are visual artists who in some cases open their workspaces um, so that you, the public, can come in and look around, look at their work, buy their work, and they often, as well as having original pieces available, which you might feel is kind of not in my budget, many artists have smaller, less expensive works, so there's a real selection. But in any case, even if you're not in the mood to buy, um, they often will demonstrate their work. They'll show you some aspect of how you make jewelry or how you paint a painting or what goes into a sculptural work. Um, it can be inspiring and lots of fun. I like to go with friends. I think it's really fun to go with another with a group of people. Um, and go from place to place. And it's over several days and even uh, a couple of weekends, right? Right. So what I find is it's possible to go dart in and out on my own, on my way to somewhere, then go grab my family and go to a couple more. Then the next day decide, okay, I, I didn't get a chance to do something and I'll bring a friend and go do that. I really love that format where you can go where you like and, and you have those great um, signs everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. right? That people can look for. So I'm used to now seeing those signs, the open studio store, I can see the signs and I get all excited as soon as they're up. Um, what about for people who um, aren't familiar with the process, it can be a little intimidating to, to go up to, you know, you see the sign, but where's the studio, where do you go, is it really okay Can I walk into that? this person's if, house it feels, and it, do Yeah, this? it feels like, like you're imposing. Yeah. How, do, how does a first time um, enthusiast uh, cross that threshold. <laughs> well, you might like to start. There are organizations participating, too. For instance, arts, Artworks at the American Tin Cannery will be open. Um, the Carl Cherry Center for the Arts in Carmel will be open. Um, the National Steinbeck Center in Salinas will be open. So then you're just walking into an institution or a building that you already know is open to the public. In each of those places, there are a number of artists who are showing their work. And in some cases, that location is their workspace. In other cases, they're showing there because their workspace may not really be appropriate for inviting the public in. And I'm sure you'd understand that if you think about um, maybe you work in your kitchen, you're yeah. married, you have three kids and two dogs, and the idea of bringing the public in might not really work out all that well. So there is the opportunity to show in other locations. And that makes it easy for a first timer to get started, go in and talk to the first artist they may have encountered, 
and then they can go from there and walk into studios. But people are very glad to have you come and look at their work. They really are. So, Mary, is that true? That is absolutely <laughs> true. Well, the tour is September 23, 24, coming right up, where the majority of the artists have their studios open. Um, and the signage for the tour is wonderful, okay? There will be a studio tour map in the Coast Weekly tomorrow, September 21. There will be one copy, and in, in each um, copy of the weekly, and in the pine cone. This is our first year to have the pine cone have a map in each copy. So in that map is, or in that catalog map, is a map showing the location with the numbers of each of the studio. So, so I'm number 21. You're number 21. That's what I want to know. And, and tell me uh, where you're located, and also tell me why do you do, why do you do this? You personally, you don't need to do this. You're doing it because you want to. And what, what do you get out of the deal? Well, People it's, about, your space. it's <laughs> about sharing my vision and that I get to share my art. Um, my sort of um, mantra is sharing the beauty of where I live. Mm -hmm. And the silence and details in quiet places is part of my work. So being able to share that with the public is wonderful. That's beautiful. You know, as most artists, not particularly um, photographers, but most artists work solo. Yeah. So being able to have the public come and sh see your work and share with them is wonderful. So how did you get started? What what lured you in? How did you, um, did you have to overcome any any feeling of shyness, like, oh no, what do I do um, when people come? Or, or were you just really enthusiastic from the beginning? Well, the, my, I grew up thinking I was going to be an artist, <laughs> and I went to college and I got intimidated. So I oh, ended up history. getting a degree in yeah. art and a minor in math, focusing yeah. on art history which qualified me to do nothing. <laughs> so off and on, I've done some art, but uh -huh. mainly photography, uh -huh. and been able to travel to some of those beautiful places in the world. So I've been taking photographs. I got involved with the Monterey Museum of Art as a docent, and through that was able to have my first show, which was at Forest Hill Manor in their little Vest Pocket Gallery. Oh, yeah. That was my first solo show, That's and that wonderful. was in 2001. Mm -hmm. 2002, I had a solo show at the PG Art Center. Nice. And then that fall, I had the guts to be in my first studio tour. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little frightening. It but, was. It yeah. Was. My little studio is my tiny little house. Yeah. But the first year gave me so much encouragement yeah. that I love it. That's wonderful. So, and, and what are the kinds of things that people said when they, when they came and they saw your work, and not just about your work, but about the uh, opportunity that you're giving them? It's, um, to me, it's such a gift that, that you're not just sharing your work, but you're sharing your process, your space. There's so much more that a person gets when they come to these studios? Well, in a lot of instances, it's about the stories you tell. Yeah. And particularly because the majority of my art now is photography. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Every photograph has a story. So and even the pears that I have in my kitchen. Exactly. <laughs> the great pear. You know? <laughs> so um, it is about the stories. And, you know, I. I know that people come to my studio, they have for uh, almost 15 years, yeah. every year. Oh, annually. is that right? Every single year? Well, wow. the, Pretty close. the studio tour originated with Artist Equity, mm -hmm. which was an organization that they carried it on until 2015. Mm -hmm. And there was no tour in 2015. Mm -hmm. And then, thank the Arts Habitat, <laughs> because Supporting local artists is part of their mission. Yeah. They took it on last year. 
and which has taken it to another level. That's amazing. So we're going to talk about other artists and some other dimensions, but, but before we leave that, um, we are going to be able to show a couple of your images that uh, I'd love to know the story behind, like the light within. Um, can you talk about that? I can. Well, I have been in the right place at the right time with my camera. Yeah. As one as one very famous photographer said, do you know what all the most famous photographs in the world have in common? The photographer had their camera with them. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> For all of us, I wish I had my camera. We so know where the, we need to keep the it. light from within <laughs> is a calla lily, yes. which we see everywhere That's here. Yeah. But I was walking up the steps at Nepente one day, and the sun backlit that calla. It was a miracle. And if you see the image, it's my Georgia O'Keeffe. Yeah, yeah, it's exquisite. <laughs> and that's what I love about your work so much. I feel like there's so many things that I, I may go by every day. Monterey County is beautiful. There's full of all great things to see. And yet, you think that'll never happen to you. But once we live here for a while, it's easy to, to just let it go by. And one of the things I'm so grateful to artists like you um, is for is that um, you stop me and say, wait, no, really, look, really, really, look. And, and I, that's just something I'm always, always grateful for. So we have Thank a couple you. more of your images to, to show. And one I'm wondering about is the one, um, I forget the title of it, but it's, it's about lace. It's just riveting. It's Nature's Lace. Nature's Lace, that's it. And it was taken at Point Lobos on a very wintry day yes. looking toward Berg Rock, and it's Queen Anne's Lace mm -hmm. silhouetted against blue, white, stormy, stormy day. It's not even something that you would associate with Monterey County, and there it is again, you know, just, um, so I really Thank appreciate you. your being willing to be part of the studio and sharing those kinds of stories um, with people who come. And you'll be there for hours and hours, um, I'm guessing, right? 11 so to 5. 11 to 5. Saturday and Sunday, That's September 23, 24. <laughs> Lots Come of on along. <laughs> that's, that's just so wonderful. So, Marty, can you tell us? Um, there's there's just a gazillion uh, artists that are engaged each year, each time, with the uh, open studios. Can you tell us a little bit about um, how that happens? How does it happen that people find you and sign up? Is there a juried process? Is it you know what? Wh how do people get involved? Well, it's actually artists? really simple. Um, we do not have a jury. The Santa Cruz tour, which is another annual arts tour, does have a jury because they have a set number of artists. We don't. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you apply and pay the fee, we will promote you to the, to the extent that we uh -huh. possibly can yep. so that people will come to your studio. And of course, it is a two weekend tour, so an artist in the Salinas Valley might choose to participate on the weekend of September 30th, October 1st, or they might choose to be open both weekends. Many artists do that. They're open both weekends and so that you can you have four days to get to as many studios as you like. Um, when we have, we have a deadline and when we've received all of the entries at the deadline point, then we go to work on putting together the map and catalog, which is going the, the document, the, the little booklet that will be available at, through Coast Weekly and the Pinecone. You can also download it from our website, artshabitat.org, if you prefer to do that. And we have a digital map, so if you want to use your GPS and get around that way, you can do that. It's um, www.bit.ly backslash M-C-A-O-S-T, and uh, you can get that off the face of the catalog. <laughs> it's a lot easier <laughs> than trying to write it down while I'm saying it. Um, but we try to make it easy for people to find their way to the studios, mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. there are a lot of them, and there are a lot of people participating. That's wonderful. And to, to, do I have to pay to purchase the catalog or to go anywhere? It's entirely free to the public. So you can go to as many studios as you like. You can go to one or you can go to 70. And it's free. You just have to get yourself there. And there are... Or get a friend to take you. 
get a friend to take you. <laughs> Go with a group. It's much more fun. There are really wonderful experiences. I mean, apart from the various studios and the various um, places that are open with more than one artist exhibiting, there are people who do really special things. There's an yeah. artist in Royal Oaks named Andrea McCann uh -huh. who uh, has a horse and several other interesting animals. But she <laughs> plans to do a performance with her horse. It's called At Liberty, and she and this horse have developed a performance where she paints the horse. I've seen some of her work. It's yeah, amazing. It's amazing stuff. <laughs> the horse and she's is, plans is the canvas. To do that. <laughs> yeah, the horse is the canvas, and it's a, the horse is a willing participant in all of this. So, you know, if you're traveling with a kid, that might be something you want to pay That's attention brilliant. to. That's wonderful. Um, Can you talk about some of the other artists who uh, we should really watch out for in that way? Yeah, I think that um, I'm planning to see William Giles' work in Marina. He is a very well-known photographer and does not always participate in the tour. I think <laughs> it's really fortunate that we can go to his studio this year. Um, a couple of other artists I find really interesting are actually a married couple, Annette Corcoran, who works in ceramic sculpture mm -hmm. and has for years made these teapots that don't work as teapots, but they are birds. And oh, they're, yeah. <laughs> they're really quite beautiful. They're remarkably beautiful. Um, Annette has a, a big art world reputation, so she's certainly not unknown, but I love seeing her new work and it, it's always exciting me to go and see it. But her husband, Bill, who is a very um, capable um, fine, fine woodworker, has taken up photography and oh, has yeah. some very interesting work. And so the two of them are showing together. Um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what they're doing. So we have to get the catalog to see a lot more. And um, But I think one way to approach it is the way my family just uh, went to the jazz festival uh -huh. where sometimes it was myself and my husband and friends and sometimes it was my husband and my mom and sometimes it was <laughs> me and my mom. It was just throughout the weekend we just traveled in pairs and in groups like you're mentioning and it, it was a great experience each time. Each time was a little different and and depending on who you're visiting I'm sure it, it's, it's got to be a different experience. So thank you so much for all your leadership and we just have another minute to go but can you talk about some of the um, groups that make it all possible, your partners? Oh, absolutely. We have a number of sponsors, and it's it's we're very appreciative. Um, our largest underwriter is um, Century Communities, who were benchmark communities. They are the developers of East Garrison, um, and they've been very generous. There will be artists at East Garrison, and they have sponsored the tour as well. Awesome. So we're going to have to leave it there, but um, we're going to talk a lot more about East Garrison and everything else. So that's a perfect segue. And uh, thanks again for joining us, and uh, please stay tuned. We're going to be talking about uh, Arts Habitat and what's going on there and uh, what's up next and how you can get involved as well. Thank you so much, Mary. Thanks, Marty, for being here. Thank you, Paulette.